behalf of the Delhi Council of India, I, Dr. Alka Kale, extend a very warm welcome to one and all to the live streaming of Delhi Council of India's 24th webinar. Next slide. Kindly note the instructions carefully. The DCI webinar are free of cost to all attendees. At the time of registration, complete the form properly. It must be full since the same will be captured for generating certificates and the CD points. No request for any change or modification in the details shall be considered. An e-certificate of attendance will be conferred to all the attendees, including undergraduate students, international attendees, and non-dentists on their registered email. CDE points will be awarded only to the dentist registered with the State Dental Council or the Tribunal of India. Certificates will be sent to the attendees by email within three days of conclusion of the webinar who have attended the entire session of webinar uninterrupted. Please check your junk email folder in case the certificate email got delivered there instead to your inbox. Attendees may also download their certificates from their webinar archive section of DCI website. If anyone has missed any of the DCI's previous webinar, the same can be watched on webinar archives of DCI website. I request all the participants to fill up the feedback form which shall be received by email along with the certificate. Next slide, please. Your feedbacks are valuable to improve the standard of the academic endeavors. I am happy to inform that the 23rd webinar of Dental Council of India on 14th of Feb had highest attendance from Savita Dental College and Hospital Chennai, Thai Mugambika Dental College and Hospital Chennai, Mallaredi Institute of Dental Sciences Hyderabad, Albadar Dental College and Hospital Gulbarga, Lakshmi Institute of Dental Sciences and Hospital Patiala. The DCI expects the same response from other colleges too. Now, I take this privilege to introduce the speaker of the 24th DCI webinar, who is a young, enthusiastic, and passionate oral pathologist, Dr. Rajiv Desai, who is presently professor and head of the Department of Oral Pathology and Microbiology at Nair Hospital Dental College, Mumbai. Born on 11th of May at Balsinor, Gujarat, Dr. Desai did his BDS and MDS from Nair Hospital Dental College, University of Bombay, and he is a fellow of Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathologists. He is recipient of several awards, and to name a few, he received the Service to Humanity Award in 2015 and Lifetime Achievement Award for Outstanding Work Towards Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathologists in 2017. Even as a student, he received the prestigious Dr. Norman Pinto Dental Pathology Medal in 1989 and Medical Welfare Trust Prize for securing highest marks in oral pathology in 1988 at Mumbai University. Dr. Rajiv is one of the most sought after guest speaker at all academic platforms and he is very much appreciated for his own unique style of presentation. To his credit, our Dr. A.T. PVG Oration at National PG Convention in 2010, Dr. H. N. Rolakia Oration in 2015, to name a few. Now, he is also honored to be recognized by our own esteemed Dental Council of India as the speaker for its 24th webinar. His topic of presentation is Clinical Pathological Perspectives of Developmental Anomalies of Teeth. I request Dr. Rajiv Desai, to kindly take over. Thank you very much, Kale Madam, for your kind words. For the participants to know, I know Kale Madam since the last 25 years. She is a thorough academician and excellent administrator. She is a role model for many students like me. And she has created her own legacy from Kaylee Belga. With your permission and with your blessings, I will begin with my presentation. Dear friends, 
I know many of us must have got up from your must Sunday evening nap. But I promise I will try my best to make it interesting with the hope that you enjoy my presentation and won't regret attending it. Being an oral pathologist, we are used to see big, big things. Please don't expect hi-fi things in this presentation like swelling, growth, or ulcers. Today, we are going to talk about tooth, tooth, and only the tooth, nothing but the tooth, because tooth is the truth of our life. I'm going to cover most fascinating but neglected aspect of day-to-day -day dentistry, that is developmental anomalies, which we come across in our day-to-day -day practice. So dear friends, let's begin the journey with our childhood. Many times we may come across presence of teeth at birth and cold as natal teeth. As such, natal teeth themselves are not problematic, but it causes pain to mother while feeding or many times it can cause ulceration in the floor of the mouth, which we call as Riga Fede disease, which you can see it very clearly over here. Nothing to worry. Either you can smoothen the teeth, extract it, or refer to the competent pedodontist for extraction. In case of emergency, you can tell mother to apply mucopain for pain management or can I caught 0.1% oral paint on the ulcer two to three times a day for healing of ulcer. These teeth were present in the ovary. And for the first time, Dr. Yashan Ingle at Pimpri showed me how the tooth in ovary looks. We have just read it in the book. The tooth can be present in the brain in the Rathke spot tumor or in the ovary. And I'm very feeling very happy to share that how tooth look in the ovary. And so beautifully they are formed molars and premolars over there. Now, many times we can get absence of teeth associated with systemic disease like gingival fibromatosis. And one of the most common anomaly is hypodontia. And cleft lip, cleft palate is usually associated with hypodontia. Please keep it in mind that 90% of the time, cleft lip and cleft palate will have associated dentinary anomalies of the teeth, but you have to look for it. Here, you can see a case of SS syndrome where patient has got a cleft palate, cleft lip, and a double lip, and a lip pit, which you can see it, which we have traced by gutta percha points. And surprisingly, this patient was also having fusion of deciduous mandibular left left incisor and canine. And at the same time, the same case was treated by obturator. Moral of the story, we can treat such patients in our day-to-day -day clinical practice if we get trained for the same. Now, problem with the cleft lip parent is aesthetic problem, nursing difficulties. And remember, you should refer to the plastic surgeon as early as possible before six weeks to avoid nursing difficulty. As far as the clap palate is concerned, I don't know how many of time you come across untreated clap palate mothers of the child of the mother and what agony they go through. Infant cannot get enough nutrition. They can't get gain enough weight. And we also as a dentist can be of great help to them. Either learn how to manage them 
or refer to a competent pedodontist to make obturator it will be of great help it is our social responsibility and you will see within 2 weeks patient has put on weight and parents are very very happy one more thing i would like to tell if the patient is having cleft lip or cleft palate you have to evaluate cardiac status because 90% of the time patient with cleft palate have congenital heart disease one more thing whenever you are taking impression of infant with cleft palate please use pulse oximeter once upon a time pulse oximeter was very new name but nowadays everyone knows about pulse oximeter in this covid 19 time and this pulse oximeter will give you whether patient oxygenation saturation has gone down or not and you can retrieve the patient back without causing any problem to the patient so use of pulse oximeter is mandatory while taking cleft palate impression in an infant please keep it in mind now i'm going to share you how dentists can help patient with other developmental problems this was the case of a apert syndrome that comes as a craniosynostosis and patient cannot go to school because everyone is to tease him so when we saw he has got fused hands and feet he cannot brush properly and all and look at his orthodontic condition crowding etc deep arch palate so someone said we can't help it but at dy patel dental called pune when we treated this case by plastic surgery and the skull surgery over there and i'll just share you how the patient was looking and how he is looking after the treatment they've done a skull based surgery they made him definitely looking much better i don't know how many of you can appreciate over here you can see the dental condition so much of crowding and moment he is having comparatively much much better teeth which i can keep it clean so moral of the story is yes you can serve this patient in private practice now counting number of teeth is very very important many times parents will come to you saying that one centrinus has is come another desiderate central is not going remember one thing line that if the one tooth is missing in the arch or you can say there is a eruption disorder 99% of the time either you have a superior tooth or you have odontome which you can see very clearly in this slide again this is a case of a ameloblastic fibrodontoma preventing eruption of mandibular first molar now you can get cleft lip and cleft palate in pierre robin syndrome now what is the moral of the story over here you can see patient is having nursing bottle caries or early childhood caries why because parents pamper them they can't give them anything else except sweets so what is as a dentist what is our moral responsibility we have to educate patients parents that please don't give them carbohydrate rich diet so what is the dentist role in cleft palate first diagnosis outside to inside that is oral cavity to heart counseling treatment obturator surgery after 18 months diet control prevention oral hygiene fluoride treatment pit and fissure sealants team dentistry and latest destruction osteogenesis and in all this dentist plays important role you can fit yourself wherever you want and it will be biggest service to the society so clinically you can say diet instructions early diagnosis of congenital heart disease associated with syndromes having internal manifestations can be diagnosed on usg knowledge about impression taking infants mouth with pulse oximetry if you don't have the proper tray you can always use your spoon's convex surface for taking impression of the palate remember spoon which has already has a handle you can put your impression compound on top of it and you can take a beautiful impression of the cleft palate and as i told you pulse oximeter is mandatory while taking impression of cleft palate patient now why cleft palate is very very important they are very special they need special treatment 
and they're not only for photographs. Remember, Dr. Daftri always used to say the prevalence rate is one in 10,000 or one in one lakh. What does it teach you? It teaches you empathetic role as a human being towards our patient. Because they got it, we did not get it. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because in that one lakh people, only one person got flat palate and rest of the nine, 99,999 never got it. That's called the empathy. And we should always be thankful to all those patients because of whom we are spared. So remember, statistical significance is very, very important. And they are, please treat them specially. Now, here, the clinical significance of the same case which I showed you before about amyloblastic fibrodontoma. Dentists are very, very eager to remove the tooth in total. Remember, please don't have affection for removing the tooth in total. You should section the tooth and remove it. It is better to remove the tooth in section. Remember that don't be over enthusiastic to remove in total. Section the tooth, whether it's an odontoma or a natural tooth. And it is better to have a fractured specimen than fractured mandible or maxilla. So what is the take-home message? That always respect tissue before removal. Because if you respect the tissue, tissue will respect you in healing. So respect tissue, tissue respects you. That's a take-home message. Now, many times we find teeth within the maxillary sinus. Now, till today, we used to do the open surgery. Now, clinicians should know that there are endoscopic surgical removal is possible now. No need to do open surgery. Please do not forget to, re to send the tissue for the histopathology examination, especially to oral pathologist in formalin to rule out odontogenic cyst and tumor. I request every dental surgeon to keep one small bottle of 10% formalin in their clinic. Please send whatever you remove from the body to oral pathologists, especially all these impacted teeth and tissues. Please don't send it. Don't throw it away. Please send it to oral pathologists. You don't know. It can be amyloblastoma or anything else over there. So it's a sincere request to all the clinicians and the clinicians of the future. Now, Counting number of teeth. In the school days, we used to give their exercise. Remember, count number of teeth with different between deciduous and permanent. Here you can see, patient is having missing deciduous right left incisor, but left left incisor is there. Imagine if we remove, what would happen if we removed left left incisor? Because even permanent left left incisor is missing. What does it mean? That presence of teeth does not presence of deciduous teeth does not give you assurance that permanent will be present what does it mean that whenever you do extraction of any tooth deciduous tooth mobile tooth or permanent teeth radiograph is mandatory you imagine if you removed left incisor and the tooth would not have come patient can take you to the court that why you never inform me that the presence of tooth is not there so please count number of teeth. If find any anomalies or any abnormality, inform patient and the parent. Take radiograph and do the treatment. Now, remember, do not remove over-retained deciduous tooth without radiograph. I'll repeat. Do not remove over-retained deciduous tooth without radiograph. You can see over here, over-retained deciduous molar. If it is removed, there is no premolar. Patient can blame you. Why never told me in advance? So inform before perform should be the policy in clinical practice. I refer. Inform before perform. Please do not remove over retained deciduous tooth without radiograph. Okay? Now, as I told you before, delayed exfoliation is because of odontome. You can see nice conglomerate mass of odontome in this case. And when we removed it, we could see it was a single odontome. It was made up of small, small tooth-like structure. It was a conglomeration of teeth for a surprise. Many times, hypodontia does not have any problem. 
Like for example, you can see the three center incisors. Nowadays, we, in orthodontics, they use this treatment, modality of treatment of extraction of one single incisor instead of two premolars over there. So every time, hypodontia or developed analysis don't have any clinical significance. But you should mention in your registration form, in your history form, that patient was having missing central, lateral, whichever tooth is there. It is very, very important as far as documentation of history. So please don't take counting your number of teeth lightly. Now, everyone knows what it is. This is a case of ectodermal dysplasia, which is an X-linked recessive disorder. Here, we cannot do anything for her right now. But the most important, as I told you before, all these kids are pampered by parents. So you to inform them, please restrict Define carbohydrate consumption to reduce caries. You can see there are only two teeth, but that got cervical decay over there. So diet restriction or diet counseling or diet education is very, very important in case of hypodontia, ectodermal dysplasia cases. Here, again, only two teeth. Here, we can do sinus. Here, someone says, I would like to put the implant. But you cannot say something on 2D. If you take three-dimensional, CBCT scan, then you'll come to know about quality of implant. So moral of the story is, whenever you put implant, CBCT is must. In this case, we could not put the CB implants in his mouth at that time because the quality of bone was not good, although OPG was looking okay over there. It needs lots of orthognathy. You could put implants or you put a graft, etc., etc., in such difficult cases over there. Now, Many times you get missing tooth with pathology or a swelling. You can see it over there, a nice bulge is there on the maxillary, left maxilla. And when you took the x-ray, you could see impacted teeth over there. And as I told you, please send tissue for histopathological examination because on excision, it turned out to be adenomatoid odontogen tumor. So what is the take-home message? If the impacted tooth is removed with the soft tissue, you have to send it for oral pathology examination. Remember, hypodontia is more common than hypodontia. We think supernatal teeth are more common, but which is not so. Hypodontia is always more common than hypodontia. Now, we'll come to supernatal teeth. Here, Dr. Praveen, my postgraduate student from Bagalkot has shared this slide. It is in a hostel wall. That lizard is having extra tail. But which is not so. The one tail will exfoliate and the other tail will take over. But he said it's an extra tail over there. So now coming to supernumerary teeth. Now, supernumerary teeth can be of different types. Mesiodents, which all come across, we supposed to extract it because of problem in cleaning and caries, etc., etc. Then we got paraprimolars. It causes caries and all. We got conical supernumerary teeth like this. We have tuberculated or supplemented supernumerary teeth like this. We have molari form supernumerary teeth like this. And at last, we have odontometers. So we got conical, we got supplemental, we got molari form, or we got odontometers types of supernumerary teeth. Now, many times, impacted supernumerary is an accidental finding. Remember, again, you have to write down in your note that patient is having supremal tooth over there. Now see this case, very interesting case. 16 year old girl with an over retained deciduous teeth. And when we took the OPG, we came to know about this. You know how many teeth were there totally? There were totally 84 teeth in her arch. Remember one tooth can give such a big problem. But nature is so great that mandible and maxilla has accommodated altogether 84 teeth without any problem. Nature is great. This patient was having cridocranial dysostosis. Okay, the absence, is, as you can see, she can meet her shoulders next to each other over there. So we could not do anything. She could not afford the big treatment, but at least we gave her a removable partial denture. 
and these are the private practice cases remember all these cases are not you can say syndrome or something it is a day to day practice cases and we have reported these cases imagine patient concern was smile i cannot smile i cannot go out and we have given her what she wanted so more of the story cases are not especially the post graduates that cases are not only for photographs you have to solve them you have to solve them now we took the history and her sister was also having a supernumerary para premolar which you can see it on the maxillary left palatal region over there so history taking is a very very important thing remember in day to day practice especially so hypodontia associated with family members and syndrome is not too common premolars are more than incisors often it is an accident and finding usually symmetrical in same arch or opposite arch so opg is very very helpful if you find any developmental anomalies now pack shape laterals very commonly come across in prior practice and you want to build up with composite or laminates or etc etc but for the knowledge when you see pack shape laterals always ask for family history many times they are familiar and it can be a jackpot for you you will come across three patterns one is a severe where both laterals are missing we have moderate one where one lateral is missing and one pack shape is present and the mild one where both the laterals are of pack sheet so in the exam is to ask you about age of eruption once upon a time people used to feel very good while extracting the tooth with that elevation at narrow spinal college we remove to remove teeth by elevation but remember never elevate maxillary first premolar in young patient seeking orthodontic treatment i repeat never use elevators whenever you are doing extraction in pediatric patient especially first premolar seeking orthodontic treatment why because permanent maxillary canine erupts after maxillary first premolar by chance if you put your elevator between canine and premolar to elevate premolar many times chances are there that incompletely formed canine may pop out it will exfoliate so please please don't use elevation while doing first premolar extraction one and second by chance also it comes out you should not get panicky you can take the same tooth put it back inside the arch in the socket and just splint it for 15 to 20 days and it will start forming normally over there so please don't get panicky your plan b should always be ready if you commit mistake what next you are going to do it remember you cannot rely on one plan only your if you are doing do extraction then your other things all the instruments should be ready now i'm coming to crown ho gaya now we'll come to the length now many times see the different size of tooth lengths are there in my personal collection i found from a small root to the large root small root is called as rhizomicry and the long root is called as rhizomegaly especially your canines maxillary canines sometimes you find long tall fellow and he is a long long roots your normal 25 mm instrument does not work in such cases so what you need in long roots you need long instrument that is more than 30 mm and you have to order specially or otherwise you have to do periapical surgery in limited cases again i remember if you have 30 mm 32 mm is fine those instruments are available but if you don't have then you have to do a periapical surgery in order to prevent recurrence over there now this was a case of a short root anomaly you can see the roots are very very small it is to exfoliate of its own okay sometimes people used to call as a dentinal dysplasia but which was not the case so you do come across such cases where teeth are mobile okay and we give a rpd over there and patient was doing fine so pre op as well as post op over there sometimes you come across very malformed teeth like this and what we call as regional odonto dysplasia the moral of the story is what jo book mein likha hua hai sometimes you many times you can come across because you never read it does not mean does not exist so i always tell my students to read at least one the basic book in their lifetime okay and especially teeth related structure article chapters so development anomaly is very very important 
in day to day practice so this is a beautiful case of a regional odonto dysplasia so i request every clinicians of present and past or future to send the extracted teeth what happened many times they send me the tissue but they don't send me they don't send us the teeth over there they just throw it so it's a request please don't throw teeth in the dustbin please send all those teeth also for our histopathological examination now as i told you the roots were small but there was a nice dense in dent was present i think you can appreciate in the radiograph occlusal radiograph at the same time in the specimen also over there so if you come across one anomaly associated with odontogenesis size shape number anything you look for something else and you will find it is definitely over there so as i told you imagine central incisor of different length canine of different length sometimes you come across extra roots especially in the mandibular canine and mandibular central incisors why this is very important in practice i call it as endodontic postmortem i tell every student and to all my students if your root canal goes fail after extraction please don't throw the tooth away just find out why your root canal was failure maybe it was because of miss canal which you could not negotiate it was your mistake it's okay you have to learn from that so i do in my private practice i do endodontic postmortem i tell all the practitioner to do endodontic postmortem here mandibular central incisor was extracted because the clinician could not locate the second canals and if you go to the old books like our books of they say mandibular central incisor 30% of the time they have two canals over there so you have to remember all these things in your mind in private practice over there you can come across a lesion like fusion very common in deciduous teeth then the permanent teeth over there it love different pictures of fusion from my collection fusion with supremal tooth now see this case here the radiograph looks like a dense in dent but actually it is not a dense in dent it's a pseudo dense in dent appearance here central incisor has got fused with a supremal tooth giving a pseudo dense in dent so and there was a nice boil was over there so in practice you remember that to track the sinus tract we use gutta percha tracking so this is a very very important thing in private practice to every clinician most of the senior people are doing it for the students just to demonstrate how does it look where this track is going it's going to the left center incisor over there then what surgeon is planned that we will do the surgery to separate these roots over there they did the surgery they opened the flap put the bone graft and this it and they send me the tissue or the extracted part and they said we remove the entire toothpiece i said no root with is not there something is there inside so i insisted and they took the radiograph and we found a root piece still lying in the socket so what is the moral of the story that whenever you are doing any periapical surgery post op radiograph is mandatory you cannot go without radiograph in private practice after periapical so just remember that much okay talon cusp is very very important when you do root canal of talon cusp you have to do a pulpectomy of that talon cusp also because many times you will find pulp tissue within that talon remember that much doing root canal will not suffice your purpose you have to do so nowadays if you see three cbct you will find two pulp thing one pulp chamber attached with this talon over there again a beautiful case of recent case of fusion at institute concrescence this happens when you don't take x rays patient will blame you ek pe free mil gaya mere ko it was not patient fault you should have told patient that the tooth are fused that's why two teeth has come out over there and concrescence can lead to traumatic extraction remember that much so if nasib se mil gaya mere ko specimen but remember in prior practice in today's date if there is a concrescence you supposed to remove it nicely without causing bone damage in today's practice it is better to grind the tooth rather than grinding the bone over there remember that my grinding of tooth is more much better than grinding the bone 
as such okay these are the different pictures of concretions as such now remember i told you about fusion and uh, fusion and gemination and all those things over there nowadays if you want to do root canal and a straight line assess then you can use prepare a 3d guided model to have root canal assessment again repeat you can use 3d guided cbct based model for the straight line assessment of dense indent fusion or gemination cases and for this you can refer to latest endodontic journal which will be useful to you and because of that template like implant template your life becomes very very easy you do come across torodont torodont does not need any extraction you can use thermophil system nowadays you can use mta also which will make your life much much easier as far as and once upon a time they could not perform good endodontic treatment and that's why they used to remove it nowadays because of mtas and biodentin and all we can do beautiful root canal obturation with this material dilaceration remember it can cause fracture of a root piece again do a very gentle extraction in case of dilaceration traumatic extraction is not advisable see different types of and you will be surprised to know i should not tell you this but many times all the dilacerated teeth comes out very very easily apne ko lagta hai bada bada surgery karke nikala rahega but nature is great remember that much okay this was the odontom here odontom was preventing eruption of the permanent tooth as i told you before so imagine one case having so many tooth like structures imagine again nature is great it is from the same patient we have removed so many odontomes over there now this is a case of a incisal molar hypoplasia you can see we can do a beautiful aesthetic dentistry this case is given by dr kakade who is our head of the pedodontic department institute and again if it is possible please all the new generation i'll request start using rubber dam using rubber dam is not very very difficult your life will become easy okay remember that much for composite for root canals for aesthetic dentistry rubber dam is very very useful and these are hypoplastic teeth which we have made it beautiful aesthetically sometimes you come across not many times sometimes you come across enamel pearl now see this is the latest case last two weeks before i this case has been shared by dr ragu who is my prosthodontist basically he was a prosthodontist from mumbai the patient was having severe pain between 6 and 7 and there was a bone loss over there and when cbct was taken we found radio opaque structure and that is nothing but a enamel pearl so again i repeat you do come across entities which is written in the book only good thing is today's date that we got the help of cbct but cbct should be used judiciously actually i got clinical picture of this last night but i cannot share because this presentation is already prepared over there you can see a beautiful enamel pearl in the mesial wall or the mesial root mesial surface of the root in the second molar over there we they have flushed it we they have grinded it and now they are going to repeat this dense indent again one support is very difficult to treat but nowadays because of your thermophil system or the injectable gutta percha and all you can do a beautiful root canal obturation along with this this was a odontom we removed it and you will be surprised to know when you took the x ray we literally found tooth within a tooth what the moral of the story that development enamel can give you a what you call a, a fun when you dissect the tooth and all it looks so beautiful you understand what i am trying to tell you so don't throw all the teeth all the teeth just for the heck of it if the good teeth are there dissect it gross it and you'll find some beautiful thing inside now everybody knows about this case it is a case of dentinogenesis imperfecta or opalescent dentin okay and you can see root canals all root canals are calcified nature has done obturation you don't have to do over there what is most important thing over here the most important thing is the treating case that any case of amelogenesis imperfecta 
or dentigenous imperfecta, family history is very, very important. This case or this case and his family can become a jackpot. You just try to imagine because it is an autosomal dominant trait. 50% chances are there that the patient's next generation will have the same disease and you have to treat them. So if you treat one patient nicely, whole generation will come to you. That's one thing. The most important for the young generation, young dentist, that you can do nice counseling. Remember, autosomal, you should know what is autosomal dominant, what is autosomal recessive, what is sex thing recessive. Because the moment you tell them autosomal dominant, they know it's a genetic disease, anuvanshik disease, and you can tell patients that your next generation chances are there. And that's the way you can do a big, big, what you call social service to the patient. See, beautiful. You can see the whole canal bell shaped crowns and all canals are calcified. So in future, suppose someone sends you a case with the calcified canals. Just remember, this is a case of dentinogenesis imperfecta. Now, a transparent tooth. Why I am showing you this slide? We make the teeth transparent to see the root canal anatomy. Okay, this is transparent. Why this is important? We call it as an endodontic postmortem. Again, suppose I want to see where the instrument is broken. I have to destruct, I have to destruct the whole teeth over there. Here I can see by making the tooth transparent. By seeing, I can know what are my causes of failures over there. So that's a transparent tooth over there. So with this, I think I'm come. I know everybody is waiting for me to conclude and they really think that yes i know what you are waiting for i finished my lecture the 25 years of collective effort were bagged and borrowed and request but do not steal developmental anomalies are fascinating passion for me i have used it as a stamp collection or the coin collection please remember Small things are as important as big things like swellings because big things always come in small packages which you saw it in case of dentinogenesis imperfecta or cridocanal dysplasia. Do not forget counting number of teeth. We are dentists first, then the specialist. OPG is must. If you see any developmental anomaly of teeth, remember OPG is must. Look for associated anomalies. Most of the time you will find something associated with some other tooth. Size, shape and number. Because odontogenesis is taking place in different stages at different time at different location. For example, somewhere initiation is taking place, somewhere morpho differentiation is taking place, somewhere else histo differentiation is taking place. So you can find something else over there. Now, you can, what I am insisting on, documenting is very important important epidemiological someone can take it as a dissertation rarities museum atlas you can use your own development anomalies or tell your patient to include developmental anomalies as their identification mark in passport like a birthmark you can use it as a passport which will be of great forensic help as an identification mark i'll request every clinician of present and future to document teeth anomalies, clinical, radiological, and specimen, and to share with your colleagues. If not required, please donate to nearby oral pathology department or your alma mater oral pathology department. And if no, if you cannot go anywhere else, you can always send it to me. I'm a very selfish person. I personally have not seen regional odontodysplasia or a ghost tooth and a dental dysplasia in my own practice. There are many other people like me who use to collect development anomalies. And for namesake, I'm just telling you Dr. Ram Manohar, who's the ex-dean of Kalikat, and Dr. Raghu Radhakrishnan from Manipal. So I will, in, I will request everyone to share your experience with developmental anomalies. At this juncture, I would like to specially thank to President DCI, Honorary Secretary, EC members, webinar subcommittee members, and technical team to give me this wonderful opportunity. I have special thanks to Dr. Goel and Dr. Mukesh sir for handling webinar professionally and making 
our life easy i really congratulate both of you sir a special thanks dr paul dr raghu radha krishnan and bar pande sir special thanks to dr alka kale madam for moderating my session and thank you for making my life easy and once again thank you to all the participants for your undivided attention yeah well uh, dr rajiv there are some questions for you oh god okay and i will be reading the questions uh, the first question is from dr mr sukant who said, who has asked you that sir what is the main reason for such developmental deformities yeah uh the sushan alka ma'am and the questioner all the developmental anomalies are because of genetic predisposition once upon time we never knew that hypodontia is because of pax9 or msx2 or msx1 if you go into the literature you will find missing lateral incisor has particular gene deformation missing molar has particular gene mutation over there so all these development anomalies are due to genetic mutation taking place either at the initiation phase histo differentiation phase morpho differentiation phase eruption phase etc etc you know what i'm trying to tell you madam like okay okay now the next question is from uh, neha kumari uh, and she has asked you what is the meaning of distraction osteogenesis okay distraction osteogenesis is basically done by oral surgeons where they will bring two bone bone fragments next to each other by applying forces over the, like orthodontic force we remove the tooth over there we move the tooth same way they apply pressure they put the plate inside the bone and they will bring both the parts of the bone next to each other especially in cleft palate and fractures and all those things over there so basically oral surgeon uses distraction osteogenesis in the practice orthopedic surgeons uses distraction osteogenesis for landing of their bones and all those things over there okay now there is one question from uh, mr sayyad kadri who has asked does a fusion of deciduous central and lateral incisor mean that the permanent teeth is missing not necessarily man that's why i said presence of teeth does not give you guarantee of absence of teeth same way presence of teeth does not give you presence of teeth also you know like what i'm trying to before extraction you to take radiograph that's a mandatory then you will come to know whether my permanent teeth are there or not we cannot go on a assumption basis because something is there my permanent has to be there you can't view that okay uh, this is another question probably you have really not touched on this is uh, from mohammed nisar ahmed uh, he says why people have black gums yeah now see the th whole thing was on the developmental anomalies of teeth so i never went on a soft tissue aspect over there but there are very many causes of in india if you ask me one of the most common cause of pig, uh, gum teeth is racial pigmentation you know there one of the most common cause over there sometimes they say if you get isolated cases then you can say melanoplakia or something like that or smoking also causes darkening of gums and last if you say isolated dirty pieces of teeth then you do think of melanoma over there and biopsy is must otherwise if the generalized pigmentation is there because of racial pigmentation medication also can give rise to the pigmentation over there okay now this was uh, from ahmed al haq he has asked that in rhizo megali case was the rpd given as an overdenture or the teeth were extracted before giving the rpd in your case yeah in case the entry teeth were removed because very mobile over there and we have given the rpd over there we never did over dentures in such in that case okay madam it was given as a normal rpd over there after extraction of the teeth now this is some private practitioner who has asked okay. dr mehul shah uh, he says uh, that how long can the soft and hard tissue specimen store be stored before it reaches a pathology lab and which solution can be used if formalin is not available see very honestly for biopsy purpose we used we have to have 10% formalin at any cost tooth can be sent in anything but if you want to know pulp pathology and all then we need formalin so that's why I written madam in the slide also the every practitioner should have at least one small bottle of 10% formalin in their private practice usually that thing is missing in their armamentarium so they should put one bottle of 10% formalin in their practice over there that's true uh, there's one question from kim yama 
um sir if the natal teeth are extracted will the permanent lower yes. central incisor erupt in its yes. place yes ma'am yes ma'am it will erupt in that place over there okay the normal procedure it will come over there um this is i think uh, maybe you have answered this question from himanshu garg uh, odontom is complex type or compound type in this tooth you have shown yeah I the tooth which i yeah the to- the tooth which i have shown was a compound odontom like a tooth like structure but we sectioned it we found one more tooth within the tooth is a compound odontom over there uh, there is uh, in uh, lekha induru indurkuru who said who is asking why should we always check heart fingers brain in patients with cranio facial syndromes what again i couldn't follow ma'am please repeat why should we always check for heart fingers brain in patients with cranio facial syndromes see madam actually speaking it has been taught to us from bds days that we are not treating only teeth we supposed to do general examination like we see the patient from the gate onwards how he is walking how he is talking etc etc over there so we should not forget our basic examination pattern and when the some special cases comes we need special examination over there and in cranio synostosis like apert syndrome or crozon disease you will find syndactyly polydactyly is a part of that, that syndrome so the whole thing is if you see some special case you should do general body examination along with entire oral cavity with opg over there so importance of the systemic examination everyone every dentist should not forget about it that was the whole message to them and we don't come across this cases every day madam Correct. but yes ek bar jindagi mein aa gaya so we get hyper ki abhi kya karna chahiye because i shared my all the private practitioners cases which they will might come across in day to day life very true dr rajiv very well spoken from the heart thank you very much rajiv for that excellent presentation yeah. uh, your unique style of simplifying the explanation is worth appreciation thank you very much for sharing those rare conditions knowledge acquired if applied to day to day practice will surely help in delivering best dental care thank you once again thank you ma'am thank you uh, well i would like to uh, conclude this webinar once again by appreciating the dental colleges who have maximum attendance for the 23rd webinar savita dental college and hospital chennai and i would also like to tell that the savita dental college and hospital has been at this top position continuously for the last five webinars and the dci definitely recognizes their support and enthusiasm the other colleges who have also done well are thai mugambika dental college and hospital chennai malla reddy institute of dental sciences hyderabad albadar dental college and hospital gulbarga lakshibai institute of dental sciences and hospital patiala the dental council of india expects that all other institutions all colleges all students should also show the same enthusiasm in attending the webinars which have been planned by the dental council of india on behalf of all the attendees I take this opportunity to thank the honorable president of dental council the dci secretary and all the members for making this academic fiesta available to all i especially thank the subcommittee of webinar mr mukesh deputy secretary of dci and dr virendra goyal for their herculean effort to organize the webinar to such a level of perfection thank you one and all i would also like to say that the next dci webinar is on basic concepts of removal and fixed orthodontic appliances on 14th of march 2021 sunday at 4 pm the presenter is dr sunil mudaiya and the moderator is dr puneet patra i request all the people who are attending the webinar and others who are following it to kindly attend the webinar in large numbers and make the most of it thank you very much